there's a definite threat to the information security that sort of underlies uh, our government and our defense. There's definitely people that are trying to ta you know trying to steal that information, trying to listen in on that information, try to subvert that information. That's definitely happening. But I think I don't think it helps to say the sky is falling. This is at Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the fight to maintain cyber security. In these days of WikiLeaks and identity theft, cybersecurity is an ever-evolving high-tech game of cat and mouse. Expert Noah Schachman explains. Well, Noah, we hear so much about cyber threats. What exactly are these threats? We're like combining all this stuff into one big pile of cybersecurity, and that can include viruses or worms that we might get you know, every day on our computers. It might be espionage at the Pentagon, or it might be, you know, sort of wholesale theft of intellectual property. And we're sort of looping all this stuff together that maybe doesn't necessarily belong together. It's kind of like putting together, um, you know, armed bank robbery, uh, um, you know, people firing bazookas, and, um, uh, you know, the Afghanistan war all under gunpowder security. It's kind of like, you know, there's a lot of different things out there. What are the biggest risks to um, our government? The Pentagon relies on the same computers that we do, right? So the same kind of viruses and worms and trojans that we might get on our computers, well, that's, um, you know, that's a problem for the Pentagon also. In addition, right, they've got people writing very specific programs to specifically target uh, military networks. And on top of that, they've got over, you know, they've got millions of users of these Pentagon networks, right? So while you or I might be kind of savvy about, hey, that email doesn't look right, it looks like kind of a come on, you know, if there's two million of us, the chance, they only need to get at one of us to get some, um, you know, to start compromising uh, network security. So, the, you know, sort of the law of big numbers uh, plays against the Pentagon. So they've got a real concern. And the other thing the Pentagon's got a, got a concern with is they've got so many millions of computers, right? And they're, they're organized in so many little mini networks that it's hard to keep track of it all. And so it's hard to keep track of which computers are actually secure and which ones aren't, which ones are up to date with the latest uh, antivirus software, which ones aren't. And so they're, they're facing a huge problem with that. Well, is our national security at risk as well? We want people within the military to be able to share ideas, share information, share tips. You know, you want that to happen. Um, and so you don't want to cripple that just because there's, you know, one kid who decided to give a bunch of information on WikiLeaks. But what you can do is you can screen people more carefully. And so this, uh, this uh, young private who's, you know, believed to have spilled, you know, the vast majority of, of the WikiLeaks uh, documents, um, you know, he got in trouble early on during his early training about uploading classified material to YouTube. Um, so that should have been a sign right there that, hey, wait a minute this guy uh, shouldn't have access uh, maybe to, to secret and top secret information. What about terrorist threats and the internet? Are we at risk in that way? The terrorist threat is, um, you know, important to monitor, but is not, you know, is not that severe, right? And so, you know, to, uh, you know, this kind of hacking requires a certain level of sophistication. And uh, it, the more you go into classified networks, the more you go into secure systems, the more sophisticated a, um, a set of programmers and a set of hackers you need. And that's just not necessarily um, what Al-Qaeda is good at. Noah, Homeland Security has launched its Cyber Command. What can you tell me about that? The U.S. military has been thinking about and working on Cyber Command for a number of years. It officially came online uh, in November of 2010. And it's about a thousand-man force, and the idea is kind of to coordinate um, first and foremost the Pentagon's defense of its own military networks, right? And to figure out how how to do that. And on top of that, there's a lot of talk about well, how does it coordinate, or what role should it have in coordinating the Pentagon's computer network attacks, right? How do we do? How do we use our sort of uh, military hackers against other countries? And that's, you know, those are ongoing projects that are happening all the time. Then there's also a question of what role, if any, should the military have in defending, like, the civilian internet, right? The internet that we, you and I use every day. Is there anything to be alarmed about when we talk about protecting the internet? 
The question of network security has been going on for as long as the internet itself, or maybe even longer. And there is a sort of long cat and mouse game between attacker and defender, right? The attacker, though, usually has the edge um, because um, you can really automate attacks and, and you, can, you can both automate attacks and you can really personalize them and, and both of those things can be tough to stop. Uh, but that said, uh, I think we are starting to get a little bit more sophisticated about defense and uh, although there's some real Cassandra saying, oh my God, you know, uh, we're all going to die. And then there's some people that say, oh, it's no big deal. I think we're starting to come to a, a more realistic place about, you know, look, we're all depending on the internet and computer networks to do our banking, to, you know, run our companies, to defend the country. And we need to get smarter about how we uh, protect those assets. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, or iPhone, go to brookings.edu mobile.